Perfect. Uh, just before I forgot, um, just a reminder that we are going to give away a pop uh, for the attendance to the course. Uh, Boeing has already uh, given you all the information on the forum post that he kindly uh, adds every week. Um, basically, what, uh, what we're going to do, Boeing is going to be checking the attendance and those, I don't know, we, we will decide, but those who are able to make it for most of the classes, uh, should be should be getting the codes. I, I have some of the codes, so the last day of the class, I will just uh, give you uh, to those that have been able to attend, and, and at least you will have a proof that uh, that you've been joining the course. Okay, so let's start with today. Uh, today's graphics, uh, and we're gonna play with some real data. Uh, as a uh, as I told you, the very first days uh, in data science, most of the time we, we, we spend it trying to capture and format and have the information the way, the way we need it. Um, most of the time we're, gonna, we're not going to have a nice, beautiful database that we can grab, like the one we had the other day from the Titanic data. And we'll just have to find it. Sometimes we might be lucky and it may be free. Other times we might have to pay for it, but whatever we get, it's never going to be exactly what we are looking for or, or it's not going to have the format we want. So we will have to, to spend a lot of time playing the, the, with the data. Once we have it uh, in the format we want it, it's uh, quite easy to build and display the way, the way we, we want to have it. So, uh, and today we're going to play with CoinGecko uh, information from from Hive and also from other coins because uh, Hive, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, Honey uh, has only one exchange, which is HoneySwap, and um, and we get all the information from that source and the graphics that we may get are not that that nice or that pretty because we don't have a lot of information to share, but uh, but. Um, but anyway, uh, we will uh, we will just play with Honey and, and, and Badger or any other. We can try any other currency that you may think of. So for for this uh, lecture, as I told you, we got uh, we we go and get the information from Coin uh, CoinGecko. So the very first thing you have to do is install your uh, your CoinGecko library if you don't have it. That's what I do in this very first uh, cell. Basically, what this does, although it's already installed on my computer, I will run it, and uh, it may just tell me that it's already installed here. Let's no, hold on. This is Google Colab, so it's gonna install it because it's not. Uh, I just opened it up a uh, while ago. This file and uh, it's it's installing it because I'm running I'm running the cell for the first time. Okay, so if everything goes correct, you should get. Whenever you install any library, you should get a final message here telling you that it was successful and giving you the version of of the uh, of the library that you just installed. Okay. Once this is done, a good practice is to just comment again. This. Um, oh, hold on. Let me let me try this so you get my cursor because the other day someone warned me that you didn't see my cursor. Do you do you see my cursor now? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That's much better because then you can figure out what what I'm typing or what I'm pointing. So after you after you run this cell, it's a good practice to just uh, comment this uh, command and and just hide it. So if for any reason you run this cell again, it's not gonna install it again. Now the first the first uh, or the second cell in this case is importing the libraries as usual we import pandas and we sh give the shortcut to pd numpy md uh, mp excuse me uh, mathplotly pyplot as plt seaborn which is a library that modifies as i told you modifies the graphs that mathplotly work uh, does you need to run seaborn you need mathplotly uh, to have to, uh, to to run and finally the one that we imported from coin get co all we are gonna import is this little piece of uh, of class this class that it's the one that's giving us the information now I had to go into coin get co look at the their information check their documentation for the API and get get the info from there 
okay? That's what you will have to do if you ever need to, you know, fetch information from whatever site that you want to try to get. Go into their documentation, see how they structure their data, and see what the, uh, you know, different modules that they have and the code that, that, that you need to, to do. Okay, so in case of, of CoinGecko, which uh, luckily for us, uh, it gives their information for free. All you have to do is instantiate a new variable, which we're going to call CG from CoinGecko, and just make it equal to this API, API call. This is, this is going to call the API and get all the information from that call into this instance. Now, once we've done that, there's different, different, um, different um, instructions, let's say, different uh, yeah, code that we can run. One of them is the list of different currencies that CoinGecko has. And we just introduce that list into this new variable. So if we let's run, first of all, the import libraries first. And now if we run this uh, cell, it's going to show us the names as CoinGecko has them of all the, all the tokens and currencies, and you can see them here. Let's say BKC, it stands for blockchain of hash power, right here, ID uh, name, hold on, I think. Oh yeah, it's this. Here, let's go to the top, very top. Let's see, there we go. So if we, we let's say, we wanna find, let's go with, one uh, X, okay, one X short for compound token. This is the the name that uh, you have to type in order to get the information from one X short compound token. For let's say, for for instance, Badger, I wanted to check the information from Badger, uh, from Badger DAO. And if we go on and look for B, let's go all the way down for B. Badger. Badger, okay. See, I was introducing Badger and it didn't work. I needed to introduce Badger DAO in order to get the information because it's the way that CoinGecko uses, all right? So this command is just for you if you wanna later on play with this, uh, with this file and check uh, the graphs and the charts that it creates with other currencies. It's a way for you to figure out exactly the name that you have to introduce when you do the searches on the cells farther down okay so this was just to to show you right now what we're doing is we are gonna check the information let's start initially not with badger now let's just start with honey so i comment the the same instruction here and i all i do here is i create um i create sorry i create a variable called currency and i give it the name of honey which is exactly, I've checked the name that CoinGecko uses to access the information from Han token. Now, right now that I already know which currency I want to get, I introduce in this variable all the data. I call this instance of CoinGecko that I created up here. And with this other command, I get all the information from currency, which happens to be because I call it here, honey. Okay, now if I run this, this is what you get. Oh, uh, it's not, oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't burn it here, so I just typed data, so I want the cell to show me the information that I just got, and this is the information I get, okay? In, um, this is all the information I have in this variable that I just created from calling CoinGecko, and most of the time, in, in APIs, you get the information in a JSON file, which stands for uh, JavaScript uh, option notation. And in, in Python, this converts your data into a dictionary. Remember that a dictionary is a kind of data type that has like a title, usually in text, under quotes, and then whatever values that title has, okay? So this is all the information that we get from calling honey currency into CoinGecko. All right, there is a lot of information, different kinds of information. And from all that data, you have to extract exactly what you wanted and try to give it or get it in the format you wanted. Okay, so that's what we are doing right here. 
Okay, so the first thing we're gonna say we're gonna get from this data variable is the name of the currency. We already know the name of the currency, but imagine we don't know it. So the way to do it is call this variable data and tell him give me the name of the ID from uh, all this information that you got. And this is gonna give us the name of honey. We also request the market data. We request the current price, okay? Look how we do it. We call market data all the information that's underneath the title called data into all this information that we got. And once we have all the market data, we get the current price, just selecting from market data all the information that's under the name current price. And we do exactly the same with all-time high, all-time high and total volume, okay? And once we have that, we also get the price in US dollars. Uh, we just give a name variable, the all-time high, the date, and the volume, and we finally print all the, all the values down here. So we're talking about honey. The current price is three, $304.33. The all-time high price was 1,322.09. It happened on uh, October the 22nd, past last year at 12.34. And the volume is, uh, whatever it is, is 203.674 US dollars. Okay. Now, if we right here change the uh, currency and instead of honey, we run with, we just change it. Uh, we have to run this cell because now we want to get all the information in data variable about budget per down, you see here, okay, that, that has changed. And if we run the cell now, what we're going to do is the values of budget, which is 40 US dollars and all time high was uh, 42 and, and so on. All right, let me get back to, uh, let me get back to honey because I want to keep moving forward with, with honey. Now, this is basic information. Uh, this cell basically shows you how do we extract all the data from CoinGecko from the data variable that it's got everything stored from that specific currency. Now, let's go and get, um, let's get the, uh, the uh, what is this one? No, the information from can get caught. This is this is okay. Now what we're gonna get is all the information from all the markets where this currency is uh, is trading. Okay. In case of Honey, we only have Honey Swap. Okay. And what this does, it extracts the volume from the exchanges, and it creates a data frame with the volume that's traded per market and per currency pair, and all that in US dollars, because uh, that's uh, something nice from CoinGecko. You can get the information in US dollars, in British pounds, in euros, in yen, in many different currencies. We are dealing, or we want to deal with US dollars, so we are getting the, all the information in US dollars. So I just want to show you this little piece of, of uh, code. Basically what we do here, with this part of the code, we extract the information. Now here is where we build our data frame because we want to have everything in a data frame uh, variable like, like pandas. And from there, we can very easily create our charts. Uh, so I declare a variable here, which I call traded volume. And here I create for the first time my data frame. And I tell them that it's going to have two columns. One is going to be the change or three columns. One is going to be the change. Another one is going to be the pair and another one is going to be, and the third one is going to be the amount. Okay. And now what I do is I have a for loop that all it does, it goes through all the exchanges that I found here and it gets the information, the name of the change. You see here the ILOC function that goes and checks for the name, the pair and the amount. Okay, and in the in, in case of honey, this for loop is going to loop only once because we only have one exchange and only have one pair 
which I believe is honey uh, against the XI. Okay, uh, but if we have other other currencies where there is many more, and we will check that later on again with Badger DAO, you will see that uh, this loop runs many more times, and it gives us many much more information. And I finally, when I'm done, I print all the data frame to see what I got. So if I run this right now, it shouldn't be taking so long. I don't know if it's taking so long. Oops. Let's see. I think there we go. There we, go. We, got, we got an error. Let's see what going on here. Error, HTTP response, CNN, the response buffer. So don't type error, get response, got an expected keyword argument buffering during handling of the above exemption. This, this seems to be an error from Coingecko. You see, let's run again. Let's see, this gives me an error. This is good. Okay, it, it went okay now. All right, so it tells me, as you see, we have a data frame with three columns, the ones that I created here, a change per an amount. And since this, uh, since CoinGetCo found only information from one exchange and one pair, it just gave us this data frame has only one row of information. Okay, and it's telling us it's uh, the exchange is HoneySwap, Honey, is trading against XI and the amount, which is the volume that we are seeing in this uh, exchange with this pair is uh, 203348 um, because uh, we are getting the information in dollars. Okay. Uh, now, if we run and check, remember, this is a way to see the information that we have on a data frame is the info instruction and it's telling us this is a, a, a pandas uh, data frame it has three columns okay and as you can see the way we get the information from CoinGecko although we see a number here is telling us that this type is not a number and this is important because if we want to see the information just type as we see it here there is no Big deal. We see it in in a in a text uh, style. It's a text um, variable, and there's no problem. But if we want to deal with arithmetic um, instructions or charts, we need to convert this amount into a number. Okay. So this is what I do here. Okay. I need to create a new data frame, or I just create a new data frame. I want to leave the one that I used just as it is, just in case I do something wrong here and I need later on to use this original information. So I create a new one to convert the amount values from string to numeric, okay? And I just, I'm gonna call this data frame instead of traded volume, I'm gonna call it traded data frame. And I'm just creating this new, this new data frame exactly from the preview data frame, which is called trade volume. So after this line, all I have is exactly the same data frame here on traded DF that I had on traded volume. Right here is when I check for amount, okay, and I change, okay, I, I, I start getting the information from amount and I, and I change it to an numeric, okay, this is an instruction to change the the uh, the data type from uh, string to numeric. All right. So now that I have this, that I've converted my amount column into a number, I can already play with the instructions on Mathplotlib and start creating a figure. And this is what I do here. I just create a figure of size twenty ten. I give it the size of the of the image. I am going to use um, I'm going to label the x-axis with the name exchanges, and I'm going to give it a font size of 24. I'm going to label the 
take the Y label as pairs. I'm going to give it a font size of 24. I'm going to put a title, which is going to be name. Remember, name is the variable that we created up here, up here with the name of the, uh, uh, hold on, what is it? Currency. Uh, did I get the, oh, right here. Print name. Okay, right here we created the variable name and we gave it the data extracted from CoinGecko that identified our our currency. So where's the graph right here? We're gonna give the title of name plus traded volume. In this case, it's gonna be high traded high uh, honey traded volume, and it's gonna have a font size a little bit bigger, thirty two. And then, and this is something I had to do especially not for not for honey because as we see, we have a very low information amount. Of of information, but when we have uh, more more information like on, on, on Badger DAO, uh, what I did here was turn 45 degrees the labels on the x axis. So, you know, if they are a little bit longer, they don't, you know, get one over the other. And finally, I create the graph. So, this is what we're going to do here. And finally, we have a little. Uh, we are graph because as we have only one value, all we have is a uh, one pair, which is its i, one exchange, which is honey swap, and this is the value that we create. And this value, basically, what it does it represents on a circle on uh, the volume that is trading into uh, into this exchange and this pair. And this is how we manage the size of this bubble. If I change this and divide it by 1,000 instead of dividing it by 5,000, it's going to be a little bit bigger. Okay? And I just play with this division depending on how the data shows. Okay? If I put here, let's, let's put 100, and it should nicer at least, a bigger size. All right? Now, let's do exactly the same, but changing. Let's go and get data from Badger DAO. So what we have to do is go up here, change this line, uncomment it, comment the honey, and run this cell. So uh, what's going on here? Fetching data. Yeah, this is giving us the data, which we don't really need anymore. We just so that is getting the data. Now I run, I create the data frame. Uh, hold on, no, I get the information, now it's telling me it's Badger DAO, and it's all the information from Badger DAO, and now I'm going to get the information from the exchanges, this time from Badger DAO. And right now, as you can see, since Badger uh, is offered in many more exchanges, we see it's in Uniswap against ETH, it's in SushiSwap against ETH, it's in Honey Global with US Dollar Tether, OK exchange with your dollar tether, Huawei with ETH, ETH Gate IO. Okay, all these uh, different exchanges. Actually, there's 24 because it's 23 plus the number zero here. And these numbers are the volumes. As you can see, Uniswap is the one that's dealing with the biggest amount of volume. Okay, and it looks like Susi Schwab. No, no, no. Uh, this one looks uh, Huawei, but Again, here we have, remember, these numbers are not real, they, they are numbers, they are, they are characters. So what we do here is, uh, let's forget about this, we don't need to see the, the, the info of the, of the data frame, we already know it. Uh, right here, we change it to numeric, and we're going to plot the chart, and this time we're going to see the information from budget now. There we go. And as you can see, since the volumes on Badger are much bigger than the ones on Honey, we're getting an awful size of bubbles. And this is why I have here 5,000 because I probably was playing with, with Badger down before. And now you just have to keep trying, all right? Now, with this chart, we can clearly see that we have Uniswap pair trading against ETH, that it's the biggest. and here we can see that uh, Huobi against the US dollar is slightly bigger than Sushi Swap against ETH. Okay, and then we have a bunch of other of other markets 
uh, with this uh, that where 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 Badger is is trading. Okay, so this is just the whole process you're gonna have to do all the time. Find where the information is. In this case, we could we could have gotten it from from another source like uh, Coin Market Cap. Uh, why I didn't use Coin Market Cap is because it, it's because they don't they don't give it they don't give it free. Okay, so I so I used Coin Gecko. But even though once once we identify the source, we have to figure out how we have to request that information from the source. And once we get it, we have to treat it to to have it on you know the way we 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 need it to create whatever we want to do in this case is charts now let's uh show a little bit uh, a little bit more um, figures here okay so uh right here what I, what, what we're going to do is if you check right here i was playing with i was i was creating my chart with, with uh mathplotly this plt if you recall is the the uh, alias that we gave to Mathplotly. What we're going to do now is play with Seaborn, and we're going to use SNS instead of PLT. And we're creating right now, instead of a bubble chart, we're creating a bar chart. And this time, but look, we are using uh, the same information. We are. We have not touched the information. The only thing we are doing is providing it to the function that we are calling right here. Okay. In this case, when we call a bar, we have to specify the x-axis and the y-axis this way, and we have to tell what information we are using. And here is where we provide the data. We are providing the data as the whole data frame. Okay. And on this kind of uh, chart, we can provide the type of the palette of colors. We could type here, for instance, I think, I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not. Uh, let me see if it was blues or, yeah, okay. And all these, all these values that you can play with is um, are, are provided on SNS uh, library, so you just, uh, that was on the on the previous uh, lecture, uh, I think uh, one of the cells. So you just go to SNS Seaborn and find for you know bar chart, and it's gonna tell you all the variables, or all the different options that you have to uh, to to define. Okay, here probably this is the X color, which I requested to be white, and probably if we write a P, yeah, it's giving us the edge. Uh, here of the of the chart of the bars. So basically, what this chart is showing us is by a change is telling us on every change what it's grouping by 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 currency. Okay, we see that on Uniswap, the only uh, a change pair that we have is ETH. Have Ether in Susi Swap the same, but in Huawei you have the biggest volume in US dollar Tether. And then, but you also in Huawei, you have the uh, Badger DAO ETH pair, and you have the Badger DAO, this is BTC or US dollar, I think it's, it's BTC. Okay, the only one with US, with US dollar is 0x protocol. Okay, so as you can see, creating just used a couple of instructions here to create a completely different chart because we already had the information uh, organized the way. Uh, we uh, we we needed it in order to uh, create our charts. All right. Now this is um, what what um, what we're gonna do right now is create uh, a line chart. Okay. And with this um, with this new um, you know set of instructions, what we're gonna do is get the evolution of the price, which is already on the data that we got from CoinGetCo. Uh, no, it, it wasn't on the data that we got from CoinGetCo. We want to have the price from the last 30 days. This 30 indicates that what I want to get from CoinGetCo the last 30 days of my currency, which right now is BadgerDAO. Let's change that to Honey. Let's see it on Honey that we are more used to. And change that to Honey now that we've seen already. Uh, 
Let's run it again. Let's run this one. Okay. All right. And we don't need to create the charts. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to CoinGetCo. This is a different, different you know, request than the one we got before. And this one is, is called GetCoin Market Chart or by ID. Okay, and it's requesting us to give it the ID, which in this case is Honey, as we introduce in our currency variable Honey. You can see it here on this little um, you know, piece of information that I get when I go over my mouse over the variable. And we are providing the, the uh, base um, fiat currency that we want to we get the information in and the amount of days. And this is going to be stored in another variable, which we call chart data. Now let's just ask or request to show us this chart data when it gets it from CoinGecko. And again, you will see that we are getting the information on a similar way. Here, let me go It calls, um, it, it gives me a dictionary again. And this, this time, it's giving us pairs of information, okay? And right here, we don't really see what this information is. You have to go to CoinGetCo. One of the pairs, all, all this is text, but one of these numbers represents the date, and the other number represents the amount, okay? I think uh, that's what it is. So let's, let's see how we get the information the way we want it, because if we try to create the chart with this, it's going to be, it's going to be useless. So what, what we do is we start, we generate the data frame um, from the price and the volume that we got, okay? And um, we get, we're going to create a new variable that's going to be the data price, and I'm going to create the data frame from scratch, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to get the data from data chart that I collected here, and I'm going to get the prices, all right? Then I'm going to create another, another data frame that I'm, I'm going to call the data volume, and I'm going to recall the data which is placed in chart data, which is the variable, and its title is the total volumes, all right? Now, I'm going to create two columns on the data price and two columns on the data volume data frame. On the, on the price, I'm going to have date and price, and on volume, I'm going to have date and volume. Okay, now why do I do this? Because I want to now use one instruction that I think I told you the very first uh, day that we started playing with um, data frames. I'm, I'm going to join the two data frames. Okay, and, I, and if I join them, I need them to have one of the columns to, uh, to, to be exactly the same. Otherwise, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mess up. It's not going to do what we want. So, what we're going to do is going to create a final the, the data price using a join of the data price and the column volume of the data volume so this way finally on data price i will have date price and the volume column of data volume data frame so this uh, data frame should have three columns now the two ones that I used to create it plus the volume from that volume. Okay, this is what this instruction does. All right. Now, right here, these two pieces of code, basically what it do, what they do is they create, they get the information from date, which was that number, and they convert it to a real date. Okay, because, and this is all it does. It creates, uh, it translates, transforms the string which was uh, all those numbers, which is basically the way that uh, data is uh, data are stored in, in variables is usually, a, uh, I forget the name, uni uni universal date representation or something like that. Uh, it's common, common used on many languages and it's in milliseconds and it starts from a specific date. I don't remember exactly what, what date starts and it keeps adding. So basically you have to, to convert it to, uh, to uh, to a date that we are used to, and this is what we do. And I finally print uh, the, the uh, data frame to check 
if everything was correct. So this is what we do here. And as you can see, I have him with one column, which is the date. And this date is the format that I had, the way I extracted it for the first time from, the, from CoinGecko. Then I have the price. And as we can see here, we already see that these prices, okay, they are what we are expecting. Okay, it was three, three, 30 days ago, it probably was when Hive was hitting lows. And if we go to the end of the data frame, we see the price from the last trading price, which is, if I go check, let me just go to Honey, but quick here, and, and see if we get that 305, I think, which is what we got. So computer today, there's so many things working, uh, running at the same time. Okay, 306, 49, 45, all right, so, this is probably uh, the last uh, traded uh, value, but uh, if we're running now, let's see, just for curiosity, we get the 306. No, we're still not getting that, okay? Uh, it's, not, it's not updated. Uh, but uh, what I created here with this line, I created a new column, and I gave it the, the format that's here, which is uh, the format that I'm going to use to create my charts. So I had the first three columns are the ones that I generated from the jo joining both data frames. Remember that the first one had date and price, and the second one had date and volume. I joined both of them, and I, after joining them, I created a new column with the format date that I need in order to use to create the charts. All right, now that I have all the information correct, I can just with one line create the chart. There we go. And this is a chart similar to the charts that we might get from CoinGecko. And we are getting the dates correctly down here. Okay, I was, when I was running for the first time with these, uh, with these files, I, I wasn't getting the dates, then, you know, as nice as you, as you see them down here, okay? Uh, again, you can play with the figure size here. You can play with the color. In this case, it's B from blue. You can use different letters for different colors. This is the, the name that we give to the x-axis and the y-axis. Oh, no, this is the x-axis, and this is the, um, the name of the variable that we are we are plotting, which in these cases is the price, right? And this is what we get, okay? We get a chart from, you know, 30 days ago, which is, uh, what is this? Uh, the, this, keep in mind, this line represents the information that, that, that says here. So this is January 5th. This might be January 1st, since today is, today is February the 1st, or the 2nd is the 1st, okay? So, uh, yeah. This is uh, or 30, 30 days ago, and this is the price of today. Okay, just, just take a look at how easy it is to get the volume. All I have to do is change the name of the column, which is called volume, and execute it. And there we go. Now what I have is the volume instead of the price. Okay, once you have the information on the correct format, everything is really easy. Okay, we change that back to price just in case we need it later. Maybe this chart would, you know, just to make it nicer, you could put a title here again, mentioning that this is honey, and uh, just to know what type of information we're getting here. Okay, now let's get it bar chart this time, okay? This was a line chart, let's get a bar chart. And what I'm gonna plot right now is the volume, but instead of a line chart, I'm gonna create a bar chart with the volume. And since there's a lot of information, because there's plenty of dates, uh, you know, I'm getting a big, quite a big chart, all right? Uh, it's blue because I said it blue, this is the size, all right, I could give I could make it slightly higher so we can see it slightly better.
and there we go. Okay, this is the volumes being traded by uh, by Honey on each day because it's the only. If if we had more um, more than one um, uh, more than one change, these volumes that we are getting would be the uh, the sum of all the volumes from all the changes. So if we if we switch to 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 Badger, these columns would represent the total volume being changed on all the changes that. Uh, being traded on all the changes that uh, Badger DAO or whatever currency we're using uh, uh, have. Okay. Now let's uh, move one step forward, and and now now we're starting to do things a little bit tricky or a little bit more interesting here and playing with with some math, right? What uh, what what I in what I do in this uh, new cell is that I'm going to produce a line, like a trend line, over, I think I do it first on the, on the volume, okay? Uh, it's, let's, let's say I want to see the trend, although we may see it. In, in, right here, we, we don't really see if there is a trend or not. So we're going to play with some math. And what we're going to do is we, we're going to create what is called a poly, a spline or a Polynom polynomial line of a specific degree, which is in this case is going to be degree number three. This is just algebra, and this is where I specify the degree. And I'm just going to plot a trend line over my data. So it tells me from just pure math, excuse me, I just, what happened here? Just from, from plain math, um, what's the trend? of this data that I'm plotting here, okay? So in order to do that, what I'm doing is, um, first of all, I'm checking the amount of pairs that we have data. And I just use the data frame data volume. I'm gonna start using the volume data. And uh, I just grab either column and I ask to get the length. And this should give me all these 716 lines, okay, which is the amount of rows that I have of that. And I want that because since I have all these uh, lines of, of, of data, what I'm going to create is a line over this data, and I'm going to give it 716 points to generate that line that's going to give me a forecast or a tendency line over this uh, information. So I get the length. And now I'm going to create the X points and the Y points of this data. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm giving this line just uh, one space this time. And I'm, and I'm giving it the Y value is the volume, the volume that I get in that piece of information. Okay. So now that I have the X and the Y values, I'm going to create a polyline and this is what I do with these little three pieces of code. Okay, and basically the only difference right here is that I could instead of having this number three here, I could change it and we'll change it later and you see what, what, what makes a difference. Okay. And once I have all this information, what I do here is I create my figure, I give it a size of 60 and 10, and I gave it this size because we could compare with the previous one. So let me let me run this again with uh, let's let's keep it on twenty and let's change that other one with from ten to twenty. There we go. We have the twenty and we're gonna keep this one to twenty so we can compare uh, both and see how it runs. All right. And now what I do is I plot two types of information. First, I plot my line, okay, the bars of, uh, no, excuse me, I plot the bars of the information that I have, and in the second one, I plot the polyline that I created, and in this case, I give it a red color, okay, and I give it a line width of six, so we see it a little better. And in this, in this case, I, I, I added a, a title called volume evolution and with a font size of 36. So let's see what this comes out with. And there we go. And as you can see, we have the same information from 
this chart and this one, and we have created this tendency line right here that in this case, it looks like, you know, the volume, this is volume, it's not price, is basically being, you know, on a trading range, which is called trading, which basically means uh, that it's not having, it doesn't have a clear trend. Now, as I told you before, we're using a degree three line. We could increase this or decrease it. If we increase it, what's going to do, it's going to try to get the line much more, let's put a seven, much more closer to uh, the real data that we have from volume. As you see, it tries to match, get closer to the information that we have. For those of you who trade, you could think of these as the, uh, the, um, the uh, how, I forgot the name, the, the average, uh, yeah, the average, um, the moving average. And uh, this could be the 20 moving average, which is always closer than the 100 moving average. All right. So it just gives us a sense of trend and the more, the bigger value we put here, if we put up 21, I don't know if it's going to take a little while. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I think, oh yeah, it's working. There we go. As you can see now, it basically starts getting closer to the real data. The bigger the number I give, the big, the, the more information gets. Right here, there's a problem because since I start with this, it doesn't really, we, we should forget about the, the edges, all right? But this is what this, uh, this number here on the polyline uh, does. And as you, as you can see, this function comes from NumPy library. This is why I have an NP in front of my function. Okay, so this is, this is a function that you can find. It's called polyfit. It fits a polyline with X data values, Y data values, and in this case, with a degree of whatever I put here, which I'm gonna bring it back to three okay now let's do it with the price what this uh cell does here is it recreates the same but in this case we use the price which is usually has more sense than the volume and as you can see we're not getting a clear picture we are clearly uh this is this is funny Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are clearly on what is called a trading range. The price is ranging, you know, in a, in a interval of values, but it's not. It doesn't have a clear trend, neither uptrend or downtrend. All right. At least from the past thirty days. And according to this uh, this line that we generated. Okay. This this is uh, useful when you know we want to. If you take a look, it gives you much more information than just looking at the real data from the prices having this this piece of of um, of line uh, over printed over over the chart. All right. So this is basically what uh, what I wanted to show you today, uh, except for the last piece of code that we're gonna have to run from from uh, from uh, Jupyter Notebook. And this is one of the things that uh, that doesn't work on. Um, on Google Collab, okay? If we try to run, this is not gonna run, all right? Uh, you can try it if you want. Uh, it's probably gonna leave you there on an empty cell and it's not gonna do anything. We can can try it, but uh, yeah, it, it, it gives us an error, okay? And it's not, and, and it's not due to uh, the code, it's due to a function that we are using, which is called animation, okay? And uh, I'm gonna, slightly explain you what it does and uh, and then we will jump into the same code on a Jupyter Notebook and and we will run it there. So basically what I wanted to recreate here was all right we have the price here and this is nice we have a chart that, re that shows us the price of the last 30 days uh, of our currency in this case honey but I would love to have a moving Price. I would love to have an animation of this price and see how it moves uh, on a, you know, just sort of like a movie. So this is what we end up doing here. And this is done from a new library that I import here. 
I import the random number, I import uh, library, I import the iteration tools, and I import the animation module from Matplotlib and the PyPod module from Matplotlib. Okay, and you don't you don't need to understand this. There's a there's a a couple of links here that I've included with uh, I think there's a video where it show, it shows and and some and, and some uh, instructions or tutorial where it shows. It teaches how how you can recreate um, or use this animation function or animation module from from these libraries. Uh, there's one instruction here that's commented, which uh, I was trying to play around, hoping that I could create a GIF uh, automatically from this animation that you will see, but it didn't work. I think it was creating me just frames out of out of all the all the code that I was running. So basically. The way this works is that I I create a chart with the data and I keep adding data. Like I start from the first day and, and all I have is, is is one piece of data, which would be uh, right here. We still have the data frame, yeah. Let's say I start with row zero and all I have is this row of information and I print it. Then I add this other line and I print the two of them. Then I have the third line and I print the three of them. And I keep adding data from the data frame and I keep recharting over the old chart, the new one, with an additional piece of information. And this is, the, it, it does it uh, all, all, all the time. And this is what creates the effect of the animation. So let's jump into Jupyter Notebook. I already have. And let's run it here. I don't have to install CoinGecko because I already have it on my local machine. So this sadly doesn't do anything, everything is commented, but I do have to import them. Uh, I, I don't need to check the list, but anyway, it's, it's right there. Um, let me see, I wanna use it with, let's use it with Honey. So we get to see Honey here instead of Badger. So I just, Run the cells. Uh, this one should give me. Uh, this one gives me the um, check real quick. Three oh five. Still getting three oh five. Just for curiosity, it's, let's see if if it's got three oh five or it's still three oh six. Might be that CoinGecko doesn't actualize the latest information until a while. It's three oh seven now. <laughs> so okay, uh, let's get back to the. Uh, code uh, right here let's generate the uh, data frame that as we remember we have only one row of information we generate the chart which gives us just one point we generate the um, the volume which again it's giving us no excuse me this is the bar chart with in this case the data from Honeyswap and just from each side because it's the only pair that we have now let's create the uh, let's see, this is the data frame for the data price volume. This is creating us the price chart. This is creating us the volume chart, if it works. What you see an asterisk here, it's because it's, it's still running. Since I'm running on a local machine, it takes slightly longer than it took us when we were running with Google resources. Of course, they have much bigger resources than I have on my local machine, and now, Let's run the uh, spline line over the volume. Let's line. Let's run the spline line over the price. And now we have the animated graph. Now let me warn you that uh, when we run this animation, it's gonna change the aspect of the of the chart. Okay, the chart we're gonna see here with the animation is not gonna be slightly the same than these ones. And what's, what's going to happen, happen is it's, it's going to change the aspect of all my charts. So if, and we, we, I will show you, after running this animation, if I run this cell again, this chart is going to look slightly different, okay? Actually, it looks, it looks worse, <laughs> but you can always run the cells again. So I write, I run, I import my libraries, and let me just leave it here so you get to see the effect. Let's go. And as you can see, this is, uh, I wanted to make it 
slightly smaller. So let me see if I can make it smaller so we get to see all oh, oh. the size. Where's the size? What size? To see the size here. Here. Then I'm five, so let's make it. Then I'm three. Let's see. There we go. Now we see the dates. And as you can see, we are getting data. It's, it's giving us the, um, the legend here with honey. And we keep adding data. Okay, as, as we move forward, the computer is starting to suffer a little bit. I have a bunch of things open here and it, it may get stuck as it did. But as you see, the, the, the data is shrinking because it keeps getting more and more columns and, and to keep the same size, which is the size that I gave it, which was 10 and three, I think, it just keeps shrinking the columns and, and making size for the new, the new data, all right? Now we are January 13, we are still missing a few columns here and it should keep moving. And, and finally, it seems like slightly smoother now and it's working a little bit better. So at the end of the day, we will get the same chart that we had a few cells above, but uh, this is just give us a sense of, you know, in, interaction, interactivity, sense of, you know, how, how the, the data that we, we have on our data frame is, is evolving, okay? When you have this function, which is an animation, you can stop it anytime here. Even when it's finished, you might have to stop it. As you can see, this is telling us that the cell is still running. And of course, we can see it here because it's still plotting data, but uh, we're reaching the end almost. But uh, sometimes, you may not see because it may not be printing data, it's just making calculations. Right now, it looks like it's already done, almost done, still reaching the end. And we have February 1st, and we should have it. There we go. Okay, now it's finished. We see that it stopped here. And Although it stopped making calculations, we want to make sure we click here so we stop it, okay? And now we finally have our chart completed from the animation, all right? You can think of whatever you want to do. You can think of, of any, any type of animation you want, okay? And just to give you a little, um, a little example, uh, let me show you an animation I did here a few months ago. And this is, uh, for those who may not know, this is uh, a representation of two currencies, Hive, which doesn't have anything to do with one Hive, and Steam. This is a, a blockchain, the Steam blockchain that, that forked, and it, 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 it created Hive from Steam. And I wanted to compare both prices, you know, and this is the same piece of code that I've shown you, but what I've done when I was running those cells, I was capturing my screen and later on I just added some title and, and, and some music and this is what I created. So as you can see, uh, all we are doing here is representing two currencies, we could add whatever we wanted, but just is the same uh, process of getting the data. I was in that, ex in this example, I was running every single cell twice, one to get the information from one of the currencies, which was Steam, and another one to get the information from another one of the currencies, which was Hive. I was using different colors to make sure, you know, it was easy to compare. And running that animation and 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 this was the result okay so as you can see one thing is getting the data another thing is being creative with the charts you have the tools you have the charts you have the code there but uh there's many things you can do with it and and you know it just it just out of your imagination like adding that uh, that polyline curve 
that uh, shows the tendency or animating the, the information to show, uh, in this case, how both currencies are, are behaving. Okay, so this is basically what I wanted to show you today. So we, we've ended a little bit earlier today. Uh, we can use, if you want to, uh, we can use this uh, left time to go over questions you have, any specific requests that you may have, anything that you've been struggling, those who have been testing the code here or there. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to, to, to answer any, any questions that you may have. Or we can go over the, the code here and, and, you know, and, and try anything uh, or, or go over anything that you, you may want to get a closer understanding. No questions? Sometimes if no one's talking, I don't know if I'm talking alone by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not alone by yourself. It was so nice to have it already in the notebooks. Thank you so much. I'm happy that you guys uh, could follow up much easier with, uh, with the code. So uh, if there's no questions, we can slightly go over next week uh, content. Okay, next week is going to be... Uh, a big, a big, uh, you know, a big chunk of information. Uh, we're gonna run into. Uh, we're gonna have a whole lecture on 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 this part of the. I would say I don't know if I call it data science because it's it's, it's machine learning. It's part of data science also, but it's uh, it's artificial intelligence. We're gonna slightly touch and jump into artificial intelligence. And I'm gonna I'm gonna work in uh, in two or three algorithms. Uh, I'm gonna slightly uh, explain you what uh, what uh, the uh, this library does, which is gonna co it's called uh, uh, Scipy-Learn. It's uh, it's a library very common. It's one of the first libraries on artificial intelligence that was released on Python and. And we'll, I, don't, I still don't know if we're going to be playing with the Titanic data or maybe with another set of data. And basically what we're going to do is run through algorithms that we, in, in this case, next week, we're not going to be dealing with trying to capture data. We'll use with a data set already ready uh, to play with. And we're going to use the data to extract or to uh, forecast information. Okay, there's different methods to forecast or to, uh, to play with the data to try to extract uh, uh, information uh, or forecast uh, values um, that we don't have and that we, uh, that we expect to get from, from the data that we have. So that's, uh, that's basically what, what, we, what we're going to be doing. And uh, there's different ways to work uh, and different algorithms to work in, in machine learning. Um, basically, we're, we're going to be focused on, um, on uh, regression algorithms, which are those that try to give you a value from, uh, from a variable that we don't have. Like, for instance, if we measure on a, on a class of a students uh, the height and the weight of all the students, and someone tells us that next week we're going to have a new student, and it gives us the height, we, can, we could forecast the weight of this new student just from the data that we have from the students on the class already that we know, okay? Uh, for uh, uh, regression algorithms, uh, try to figure out variables that we don't know from all the information we have from the, or, uh, or from the already known variables and data. And what, what they do, it's called machine learning because what we do is we train the code to give us as a result from all the information we have. Okay, and this is what this is the basis of all the software that Facebook, Google, and all these services use to give us and su suggest us with all the information that they suggest, us, especially from advertising. Okay, they keep getting our data. They keep running machine learnings in, in case of Google and Facebook is deep learning, what it's called. It's, it's a much, much, uh, uh, 
you know, harder and, and, and difficult algorithms, but the basics is the same. They, you keep feeding the algorithm with data, and the more data you give, the more accurate it's going to be. Okay, and in order to do that, you go through the process of training the machine and testing it and checking if the test that you do is uh, good enough measuring the error with the data that you have to forecast. Okay, it's never going to be perfect, but if you have an algorithm that's 99% uh, accurate, you can more or less expect a value or a response of uh, an unknown value that, you know, it's quite, quite good. If you have an algorithm when you run it that it gives you an error of 20%, you better than try it on, on real data, okay? So that's basically what, what machine learning does on a very easy uh, explanation and quick explanation. And, and we're going to run on a, on a, on a, on a few algorithms. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully I would, you know, open up for those who've never tried, uh, you know, this, uh, this beautiful field, which is machine learning, to try and, and, and get deeper into into it. There's a, a series of, um, of videos that I will give you next week. You don't have to go over anything. If, if you do, I might, I might put a couple of links, but uh, there's uh, many videos from, uh, from one or two sources that uh, I will share next week, especially what that we're not going to go over, of course, in one lecture next week. But uh, for those of you that may be interested on, on getting deeper, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's some uh, free videos out there that are quite, not quite nice and, and cover, cover several things of the basic, uh, of basic machine learning. There's also a couple of books, open source books that are very, very interesting. So there's quite a, quite a bit of free material out there for those that would love to jump deeper into it. So basically, you that's that you can post the link to some of that material. In the yeah, I would, I would post them. I will check what's what's good for you. I, I, sometimes it's not that I wanna that I don't wanna share the links. It's, it's that sometimes I don't wanna I don't wanna give you a bunch of information that's gonna make you harder to follow the class because in order to in order to get you know to get into machine learning, you what, what I'm gonna tell you next week may require for you if you're new to go over i don't know seven eight hours of videos and it's much better if you wait we have the lecture and then uh those videos uh you can you can better jump into whatever you are interested in or start from not the very beginning just start from the middle of the video series or so on but I'm, i'll try to get links of um of uh information explaining exactly what, are, what, what machine learning is, what are the methods that we're going to be using. We're probably going to be using what is called KNN. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nearest, it's an algorithm that tries to uh, forecast the uh, information out of those values that are near to the one that we're trying to forecast. And um, that's why it's called K-near, I forgot, neighbors, K-near neighbors. And... Um, and I'll, I'll try, try to find, find some info uh, around that, that, that and, 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 and maybe uh, another algorithm that we're going to use and, and, and give it to you. But, but, but if, if I don't, don't, don't think it's that, that I don't want, it's that, that I just think that it's much better for you to get them once uh, we teach the class. Although I'll try, I'll try to, to give you some info. And of course, after the class, I will put them on the, uh, on the Notion document so everything's there. And, you know, anyone, anyone can, can follow, follow and, and, you know, and and check uh, later on. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, any more, more questions, questions here? Okay. Well, well the other day was a little, some, some of you were struggling today, giving you the uh, lecture, lecture before. before it seems that we went much, much faster. faster. Uh, let's see if next week uh, we can get the most out of uh, all the lecture. I'm going to have to go deeper into uh, uh, some theorics and explanations. Uh, and then we'll jump into the code. But, uh, but so I, I, I probably will be using most of, most of the, uh, the, the hour and a half next, uh, next week.
okay so thank you all for coming um and uh i'll see you next week if you try the uh file later on you on yourself with other currencies and other tokens uh, and you want to share uh, i'll be i'll be happy to see whatever you share on on morphosis and and if you need my my support from anything if you get stuck feel free if you see me there online uh just let me know and uh I'll, I'll try to get some time and, and give you a hand. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all for coming, and we'll okay. see you again next week. Thanks, bye. bye.